Welcome back to Locked In. I'm your host, Ian Bick. And on tonight's episode, we have NS Brooklyn here to tell his story about how he immigrated to the U.S. from Russia, grew up in a one-parent household with a stepmother in Brooklyn, New York, and started getting into crime and getting arrested at a very young age, landing himself in multiple prison stents, and ends up joining a gang inside New York State prison system. In this episode, we also dive into what it was like to spend the majority of his prison sentences inside solitary confinement and what the process was like to join a gang in prison and what he had to do as a gang member. Thank you guys for tuning into the show. Thank you for all the love and support you continue to give us on a daily basis. If you could take a second and please go check out Spotify or Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from and just leave us a simple review. It helps us boost the show and get it out to more people. Thank you guys again, and I hope you guys sit back and enjoy my interview with NS Brooklyn. NS Brooklyn, welcome to the show today. Well, your name's not actually NS Brooklyn. Um, You just go by NS Brooklyn. What's your uh, real name? Uh, Stan. Stan, awesome. Well, Stan, welcome to the show. Thank um, you for having me. Of course. I don't think they'd put NS Brooklyn on a uh, <laughs> on a birth certificate. Um, where where are you coming from today? Um, from Brooklyn. From Brooklyn. Did you grow up in Brooklyn? Yeah. Um, I was born in Russia, but I, I've been living here since I was one years old. So you're from Russia? Yeah. And your both parents are from Russia? Yeah. Interesting. And you they moved to the U.S. together to raise you? Or how'd well, that work? Well, my mom passed away in Russia, but my father came here with me i'm sorry for your loss man i'm sorry and she died early on at a young age yeah she committed suicide when i was like one. Oh wow and yeah. how old were you when you found out about that because you can't process that at, at one years old nah i mean it was like a weird situation but i ever i always knew that my whole life i don't know exactly what age but because mm-hmm. i had a stepmother growing up so you moved to Brooklyn at one years old. You're with your dad and your stepmother? Yeah. What did your dad do for work? Um, in America, he, he used to work for like car services. He's, he used to own car services. And how did you guys grow up? Is it a nice apartment or is it the shitty part of town? What's it like? Um, it wasn't too bad. We had a little bit of money at first, I guess. But then later on, it was, like, it was worse and worse. And was it, what was it like, like a one bedroom apartment, two bedroom, uh, describe like the setting? Well, I had a little brother. So eventually when we moved, I had my own room. He had his own room. My parents had their room. How old was your brother? Um, he's like five years younger than me. Five years younger than you. So he was born in the U S yeah, he was born in the U S and what was like the neighborhood? Like, was it? like gang ran was it violent criminal what, what was the, the environment um it was like a spanish predominantly neighborhood it, there's always like drugs and crime going on probably all over brooklyn how is like your middle school experience where you are you exposed to like crime at a very young age um yeah i kind of went to like jail like juvenile jail when i was like 11. That was the first time you were ever arrested? Yeah. What did you do to get it caught up in that? I was like, I think it was from fraud and like not going to school. Fraud at 11 years old? Yeah. What kind of fraud does an 11 year old commit? Well, when I was 10, my my stepmother went to Russia for vacation and I wanted a new pair of Jordans that came out. And so I asked my father if he could get it for me. And he's like, I don't have the credit card. Your stepmother has it. And then like the next day, he's like, yo, I found a bill. It was like a credit card statement and it had the credit card number on it. So he's like, see if this works. Cause he don't really speak English. Like, so when I went online, I bought myself sneakers using that credit card number. Cause it was on the credit card statement. Back in this time, there was no CBB numbers. Like the way we have now, and like when you order stuff online. Back then, it was none of that. So I think like maybe a couple of months later, I was coming home from school and I seen like a whole stack of mail and I lived in an apartment building. And when I went through the mail, I seen there was credit cards, like a statement, same statement that my stepmother had. So I took that 
And then I started ordering myself everything. Really? Yeah. And then someone reported you or how does that work? Well, I think at this time, like my dad and my stepmother found out. And then they called the cops. Yeah, my stepmother always hated me, so. <laughs> so she just called the cops on you? Yeah. Oh, and, and juvenile police or what is it, regular cops come and arrest you? Yeah, but like you don't really get in trouble. Like they, they go to the precinct, whatever, they let you out. Like you go to like family court, it's not real court. But I also wasn't going to school at the same time, so I was already. You dropped out? No, nah, I was like delinquent. I, I was just some days not going to school and stuff like that. Like Why? Was it no one was forcing you? No one was pushing you? Or well, you didn't care? What happened was like a year before that, when I was in school, well, my stepmother's friends came from Russia to America and they lost the ring in the house. Like they lost some kind of ring. And my stepmother automatically blamed me like I stole it. I never stole nothing ever in my life. I was like nine years old, right? Yeah. So she used to beat my ass every single day. Like she she even gave me like a piece of wire to stick in a socket one time and told me to stick it in there and I stuck it in there and then like electrocuted me. So after that, like I, I said, I took it and they're like, what do you do with it? I'm like, I threw it in the toilet. Like, I didn't know what to say. Like I'm a little kid, right? Like what am I doing with jewelry? Yeah. So when that happened, like, I became like the thief and I never even stole nothing before in my life. So, and then when I was going to school, my stepmother used to tell my teacher this stuff, like I, I was stealing jewelry. So one day my teacher came up with, she said, I, I'm missing a chain or something like that. And my stepmother automatically, like he definitely took it a hundred percent. So like that kind of deterred me from going to school period though. Like, yeah. I didn't. You didn't want to. It got associated with like something bad. Yeah. And I never, like, I'm a, what, what are you stealing jewelry at nine years old? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you steal like comic books or like, like I was reading comic books at this time. Like, what am I? Yeah. So like, you, what can I even do with it? Like, pawn it? Like, <laughs> so your relationship with your stepmother wasn't good? In the beginning, it was good. She used to be like my mother. Like, I still remember this. Like, once my little brother was born, I was like, it was like, fuck him and everything was about him. Like, so she used to like cook food and she used to try not to give me the food. And, Cause that was her kid. Yeah. But before that, we used to be best friends basically. Like, How was your relationship with your dad? Were you, are you guys close? Yeah, we was always close, but he was always working. Like he was the one, cause she was home with, the, with her son. So my dad was always at work, like most of the day from early morning to late at night. Mm -hmm. So it was always good. Did you, do you speak Russian? Are you fluent? Yeah. Flu completely fluent? Yeah, I mean, I only speak with, like, my father and stuff. But, yeah, I speak fluent Russian. And did you ever travel back to Russia since coming back? Yeah, I, I went there when I was younger, too, like 12 and 14. But you haven't been back since? Nah, it, was, it wasn't good. So how old are you now? I'm 34. And what time period were you growing up in? What was it early 2000s? No, yeah, you, like 2000. Like 90s? Uh, yeah, 2000. Like, gotcha. That I'm born in 89. So like, born in 89. Okay, so we're six years apart. I was born in 95. That's when my little brother was born, 95. When's the first time you start, like, getting into, like, crime and gangs and stuff? Is that high school time period? No, nah, I never even made it to high school. You never you never graduated high school? No. Nah. So you just dropped out at middle school and that was it? Yeah, I'm not. I, um, I ended up getting my GED in, in jail and then I went to college at 16, actually. But that's because mm -hmm. I was on probation and stuff. That was for, like, the, the first original crimes? No, nah, the original... For the like when I was eleven years old, they made they sent they ended up sentencing me to two years in a juvenile facility. It was in Lincoln Hall, somewhere around here actually. It's not that, that seems far. a bit excessive for an eleven year old. No, nah, well this is a juvenile facility. It's for yeah. juveniles, but that's because I wasn't going to school. Mainly like I didn't want to go to school. So if your parents can't make you go to school and you got a case already in family court, they take you away. So they took me away. Like it might have been. 13 or 14 by the time I actually went to the Lincoln Hall place. But I got arrested at 11. What's that like being in a juvenile detention center for a couple of years? Um, to be honest, it was fun for me. Like I, I didn't, I didn't think of it as jail too much because like you get to go home on once a month, you get home visits and stuff like that. Like it was like a non-secure detention center. So I used to just play basketball there. Like the, I used to be bad though. I used to fight everybody in there. Like I was a little kid. Like I was so short and small, but I didn't care. Like I used to just fight everybody, and it wasn't. I didn't look at it like punishment. Like, did people pick on you because you were Russian? 
Nah, I mean, to be honest, nobody even like knew I was Russian unless I tell them or they see my name. Like everybody always thought I was Spanish my whole life. They thought you were Spanish. Yeah. I could kind of see that a little bit. Maybe. Like, yeah, well, I always had like long hair, like, so. But it, I don't talk with an accent. A lot of Russian people have accents. Like, yeah. Well, now, when, everybody I know. When you get out of the juvenile detention center, what do you do? Do you get a job or are you going back into crime? No, nah, by the time I got out, because I ran away from there for like six months. You ran away from the detention center? Yeah. How do you run away from you it? You go home on the weekend, so I just didn't come back. Like, Why did you not come back? Because it was, like, easy not to come back over there. Like, I, I was I was a bad kid in there. Like, I wasn't doing nothing progressive. They, they didn't have me in school in there. Like, you're supposed to go to school, but I was so bad that they should not even put me in the school building. I used to play basketball all the time. So, it just when I ran away, but by the time I finished with them, I was already 15 years old, almost 16. Do you think that's what you needed, like some structure, someone to help you and be there for you? Probably. Like, it, I just feel like if it was harder in there or, like, if I – it was more, like, repercussions for the stuff I was doing in there, then I probably wouldn't go out and do more crime. But it was fun. Like, I didn't I didn't look at it like something bad. And you decide to run away. What What happens? Where do you go? What do you do? Well, I was like home or I was in my friend's house and they, they don't really look for you that much. Like they come once in a while. Like this is like you're a little kid. Like it's not like serious. No. Warren squad coming to your house. They come like once. <laughs> but you're on the run from the cops basically. Yeah. And so what do you get into? Like what are you doing? How are you spending your life? Well, I was just hanging out with the wrong people, bad people. And we was basically like robbing people at this point. What types of people? Is this a gang you're associated nah, with? No, no, no. It's just people from around the neighborhood and stuff. And you're just deciding to rob? Are you, what's the cause? Like, are you thinking it's cool? Or are you doing it for the nah. money? Well, it was for the money because I was already used to having so much stuff. Like I told you, I used to do the fraud. So I used to buy every single, like when I was growing up, I had every single video game, every single movie that came out, like VHS. I used to have walls full of them. Anything new that came out, I used to get, get it for myself. So once I realized, oh, at this time, they changed the credit card thing, so I couldn't do that anymore. Now you needed the three-digit code. Like, I swear, I always tell people they did that because of me, like, because I was ordering so much stuff. So you couldn't just use the card number no more. You had to put the CVB code. And I couldn't do that no more, so I had to find different ways to supply, like, my, I guess, addiction to stuff. Now, are you doing drugs and alcohol? No, I mean, I was drinking, but... Not really drugs. You were never really into that at all? I, I did drugs here and there, but, like, nothing addictive. Like Now, later on, like, as time progresses, do you get caught up with any gangs at all? Yeah, in prison I did. In prison. So yeah. what do you do that lands you in prison? Like, how does that catch up to you? Well, well, I was robbing people, so I got caught for, like, four robberies, something like that. At how old were you? 16 years old. 16 years old, you get caught for four robbers? Yeah. How do you get caught? What goes down? Well, I got caught because I robbed, it was like a random person in the street. And while I was robbing him, there was actually feds there waiting to raid a, like a whorehouse or like some kind of house. So like it's a dead block. And then once I robbed this guy, it was me and my co-defendant, we robbed this guy and then the feds come out of like 20 cars already on the block, but I don't know. They're doing like a sting operation. Like it's just bad timing. It's a wrong place. Wrong time. Yeah, It was literally like down the block from my house too. And they arrest you. Yeah. They, and what do you, what happens next after they arrest you? Go you? to Rikers Island. They brought you right to Rikers. Well, you go through the bookings and then you go to Rikers Island. They put bail. Did you get bail? Yeah. You always get bail. They didn't know that you were already on the run from... Oh, no, no. I already completed my... Oh, you completed that. I, I ended up okay. going back to Lincoln Hall and completed it, and I was already released from there. Like They didn't even really extend my time over there either. They just wanted me to be finished with that shit. So how much time do they give you for this robbery they get caught for at 16? Well, they give you... They ended up giving me a 6-5 split. It's like six months probation and five years. I mean, six months in jail and five years probation. So they give you only six months? In jail and five years probation. But you do something to screw that up or or do you well, get more time? When I get out of 
when I got out of um, Rikers, I was going, I was 16 still. I got my GED while I was in Rikers Island. So I o- automatically went to college at 16. And where did you go to college? Um, New York City Tech. This is after going to Rikers for six yeah. months. What's it like to be 16 years old on Rikers Island? Is that scary? It was terrible at first. Like, What's like a day-to-day life? I mean, when you're an adolescent and you go to Rikers Island, they're basically like, they ask you if you're with it. So you got to like follow the program rules. And if not, every the, the whole house beats the shit out of you. The, the who who beats you up? The whole house. The whole house? <laughs> yeah. What like, does that mean? That means just, wh- whoever's in there, like the inmates, they all jump in you and just beating the shit out of you. Did you get jumped your first week in prison? Yeah. I, not in prison, but in Rikers Island. Yeah, I got jumped like 10 times. Why do you, just because you weren't gang affiliated or anything? It wasn't really about gangs. It's like they wanted your commissary and stuff like that, like. Did you have a hard time because you're a young white kid at Rikers? Yeah, but to be honest, that didn't matter if he was white or black. Like, unless you knew somebody that was like somebody in there, Mm -hmm. this was happening to like 95% of people in there. And what were the living conditions like? Well, I I really didn't even stay in the house for too long because I kept getting jumped. So they, like, I ended up getting bailed out. My father bailed me out. Then I ended up going back. Are you getting beat up like bad when you're getting jumped? Yeah, but I know how to fight and I know how to protect myself. Like, if I'm getting jumped too bad, like, I'm just going to try to run out of there at this point. Like, at 16, I'm not. Now, did you have any aspirations? Like, did you want to do something when you grew up? Like, did you know what you wanted to do with your life? Not really. You were just kind of like a lost soul and, like, the going through the waves and seeing what happened? Yeah, I mean, in the street is, like, I basically, when I was doing crime, I had everything that I wanted, so it was not, like, I never thought about I'm gonna get a job, I'm gonna do this and and at home it was always bad, so it was like I didn't even wanna be at home. So it was a recipe for disaster, basically. Yeah. So after this Rikers Island stint, what happens next? Well, I ended up going to college, but then I, this lasted about three, four months. And then I just stopped going to probation because I was smoking weed and they didn't want you to smoke weed, so it was like well, it was a crazy story, too. I, I went to go do a drug test. I failed the drug. I put water in a cup. Like, when they ask you to pee in it, they wasn't looking at me. I put water. The guy put a stick in there. He's like, all right, this is not urine. You put literally water in here, so you're going to get violated. I talked to my probation officer, like, two minutes later. She goes, next time you come, you, I'm violating you. So I go on a run. I last for eight months on a run. I get stopped by a cop in Georgia. I, I was in Georgia. I ran like all the way to Georgia. I get arrested in Georgia and they let me go. I didn't even have a warrant out for my arrest. So it turns out, which I found out later, as soon as my probation officer told me I'm gonna violate you, she fell down those flight of stairs and broke her back. So she never even got to violate me. So I was on a run like for no reason. I really wasn't even supposed to be on a run. Oh, wow. And then like nine months later, I get a new PO and he's like, what happened? Well, how come you're not coming in? And I was so confused at the time. I didn't know what was, what was going on. She told me she's violating me. So, but long story short, I got sentenced to prison after that for violating. Yeah, for being on the run when you didn't even need to be on the run. Yeah, basically. How much time do they give you? Two and a half years in prison and three years post. They give you two and a half years in prison for that run. Where do they? Send- well, it's for the robbery. So your original case comes back in front of them. So it's for those robberies. So they resentence you, basically. Yeah, because when I got sentenced to those robberies, like the judge already, I had like the worst judge in Brooklyn. Her name was Patricia Domingo. She was on the TV show with like hot judges or something like that. Mm-hmm. She was the worst judge, and she literally told me, "If I see you again, I'm gonna give you the maximum sentence I could give you." Because usually, if you violate that, you get like a year in Rikers Island for that. They gave me two and a half years in prison. And where do they send you to? At first, you go to I went to Green Correctional Facility. And how old are you when you stopped? You got there. Seventeen years old. You're seventeen going to this adult prison. Yeah, it's, no, this is like a for all the adolescents. So, but but when I get there, I basically know everybody from Rikers Island that was with me there. So I, I'm in there with them. Are you getting jumped still? Or? No, no, no. I, the jumping only happened like in the beginning, like the last three months I was already good because the people knew I, I was fighting back and stuff like that. So they, they wasn't jumping me anymore because there was, you go from house to house. If you get jumped in one house, they put you in another house. It came to a point where I got jumped in almost all the houses. So it was like, you start back already in the same houses. 
Yeah. Now, are, are they asking you to join a gang when you get to green? Nah, not in green. There's like gangs in there, but it's like, I'm still like a young minded kid. So I was just running around being stupid in there. Like, it's, What would you do when you say being stupid? Like when I was in the dorm, I used to like play fight with everybody. Like, with like, there was one guy who was like 24, like, and he was like the biggest dude in the, in the whole compound. He came from a maximum security. And I was his neighbor and he liked me. So like, I always used to play fight with him. Like I used to stab him with pencils, like all types of stupid little kid shit. Like, even though it's still 17, but I was like young minded still. Yeah. So I used to just run around fight. And then one time, we went to the basketball courts and I was working out and I called next for a pickup game. And then there was some Latin King kids there and they ended up losing and they got mad and they're like, that's it, this is a Latin King thing, you can't play here no more. So I'm like, what? So I literally went to go fight him and my man grabbed me like, nah, chill. And then when I got back to the dorm, I was supposed to fight some Latin King kid. I didn't even know who he was. But when he seen me, he's like, nah, I'm not fighting him. Like. I'm not I'm not gonna fight him so after that when I went outside I ended up cutting the kid that that said that you can't play basketball here and stuff like that what did you cut him with a can top a can top and you just cut him yeah because that's what they do to you like so like if I'm not part of a gang he was and they don't like to be punk so that's what they're gonna try to cut me sooner or later like everybody was getting cut like so I ended up cutting him. I got caught. And after I got caught, the police beat the shit out of me and gave me like two years in the box. They put you in the shoe for two years. Yeah, but I ended up like, oh, you get an appeal. So I got like an appeal and I, I got released six months later. But you still did six months in the box. Yeah. Can you describe what that's like? Like, what's it like to go to the shoe for that long? And what's what's it like to live in the shoe? Well, in New months? York State, the shoe is you and another inmate with a shower in the cell, with a door in the front and a door in the back. In the back, the door opens up to a red cage. So if you got your wreck in the back of the cell and you don't leave that cell ever, unless you like go in a medical emergency or something like that, you got to, to the doctor. But you stay in that cell the whole time. And how are you spending your days? Like living with someone, you're smelling their shit, they're smelling them pee, like you're just there every yeah, day. Yeah, I mean, that's just the way it is in New York State. Like, Isn't that kind of like inhumane in a way? It is, but I'd rather be with somebody than be by yourself in the, in the, in the shoe. What do you guys talk about? I mean, we're playing cards. We're just talking about everything. Like I had one bunkie in, at this particular time. I'm still friends with him now. Like I still talk to him in the streets. So like, and he was my bunkie the whole time in there. What are some of like the other guys in the shoe for? What, cause it, did you guys like were able to talk to other people like shouting yeah. through the cell? I mean, you could shout through the cell. When you go to the wreck cage, everybody got the same wreck time basically. So you, you throw kites, like you, you connect fishing lines and then you stay connected with fishing lines a, a, a whole bunch of times. Yeah, can you explain what fishing is when you're in the shoe in prison and what kites are? So a kite is like a, a message or a note or a fishing line is you ripping up t-shirts or you ripping up mattresses and you're making like like string and then you make like a pole out of paper and then you throw your pole out there and then they throw their pole out there and they connect and then you just keep that line connected and you can go back and forth and what kind of messages are inmates sending i mean most of the time it's just like magazines really like right like you get a sock and you connect your socks because it's like gates so you could put a whole magazine, a book, and you just pass in books and magazines to each other. Yeah. What about contraband? Can you get contraband in the shoe at all? Yeah. I mean, you could go down on visits and you could get drugs. You could get whatever you want. To the solitary? Yeah. I mean, if you're in solitary, you still go down to regular visits. You can get a visit while you're in the shoe. Yeah. It depends. Unless you're in the shoe for something to happen in the visit floor, then they take away your visits. Dude, it's got to suck being in just a cell all day for that long i mean i did a few months of the shoe but you did over six months straight yeah i mean during the whole course like i did over eight and a half years in prison i did like seven in the box seven years in the box yeah i, I, I the same way i told you i was in rikers island in every single house i've been to every single maximum security prison in new york state so you finish this jail sentence how do you get another jail sentence 
Well, when I get out from this from jail, I didn't want to go back, so I was I went to Florida, and I was doing good for my. I also got a sister that lives in Florida, so I was doing good. I was working and stuff like that, but sooner or later, I went doing crime again. How old are you? I'm 23 at this time. And what crime lands you in prison again? Um, I was robbing drug dealers. Robbing drug dealers. Yeah. What gave you that idea? Because they're not supposed to tell any right if you rob a drug dealer like they're doing something illegal and if it's easy way to get away it's easier to get away well you think it's easier to get away and how would you rob these drug dealers how would you find them what would you do well i'm white and nobody expects me to like rob them so it was me like trying to buy drugs off of them like pounds of weed and i showed them cash and we can meet up in a public area wherever you want. Well, most of the time, if you're doing drug deals, you don't you don't meet up in a public area. So they just meet me, and I usually get weed. I was going for weed, so I was getting like 10, 20 pounds of weed. You were saying, I hey, I want 10, 20 pounds of weed. Yeah, well, I buy one here. I buy a five here. That's a lot of weed. Yeah. So they would show up with the, the 20 pounds of weed? Yeah. And it's just you and and the drug dealer? Nah, it's, it's sometimes it's me by myself. Most I like doing stuff by myself. I don't like having co-defendants. But sometimes it's me and somebody else. And then how do you rob them? Do you take a gun and Yeah, I just pull a gun out on them. And you had a gun at that age? Yeah, how, I, I always had guns. How do you get the guns? How do you get access to that? Well, it's easy where I'm from, I guess. It was just normal to have that. Yeah, I always had guns. Even when I was younger, I was always robbing people with guns. It's, it's just easier. So you end up going to jail for these drug robberies? Well, I ended up going to jail for a drug robbery back in New York. In Florida, I got arrested with a, a loaded gun and weed. As a felon? As a felon. The gun was a misdemeanor in Florida. As a felon. Well, only a misdemeanor? <laughs> yes. And, wow. and the weed was an A1 felony. Okay, and then they what? They send you to New York, or how? No, nah, they they. My sister bailed me out, and as soon as she bailed me out, I was scared that I'm a fucking convicted felon, and I just got caught with a gun that I bought for fifty dollars. That somebody might have killed somebody with that gun, so I automatically went back to New York on the run from Florida. <laughs> I didn't know the gun was a misdemeanor. Like who? That never even crossed my mind that it could have been a misdemeanor for a gun. Right, like I'm a convicted felon. You're not supposed to have a gun anyway. Yeah, you figure that's a felony. So I went back to New York and I was robbing more drug dealers in New York. And eventually I got caught. Caught by who? The local police? Yeah. How did they catch you? Well, a drug dealer told on me. The drug dealer who was committing crime says that another person robbed him. Yeah, well, I like, yeah, I tied him up in his house. <laughs> you tied up this drug dealer. Yeah, but this is this is like he was a cocaine drug dealer. But I tied him up and by yourself. Nah, it was like me and two people. You tied up this guy and he snitches on you guys. Yeah, he snitches on me. Not a, he didn't. He knew who you were. Yeah, because I'm the one that like I, I I'm the one that talks to everybody. I'm the one that like I could talk to people, and they thought I was like nice and. Mm-hmm. Until I pull out a gun on you. Because nobody expects that from a person like me. Like, Yeah, yeah, you're, you seem like a nice guy. No, that's what Quiet. I'm saying. Like, and I always got money and I always look like I got money and I'm driving in new cars. So it was like, nobody expects that. And it was so much easier for me like that. So what does he do? He just calls the cops? Yeah, he told the cops that I, I stole cocaine from him. This is, it wasn't even weed no more. I stole like eight keys of cocaine from him. Does he get in trouble at all? I, I have no idea. Honestly, like, I, I just know I got caught. <laughs> so the cops show up at your house after? Well, they didn't know where I live. I, didn't, I, wasn't, I was living in, like, hotels and stuff like that. So how do you get caught, like, after I got tells? caught in a hotel. Like, the cops knew who I was. They came to my father's house. Like, this guy was, like, he, he had a lot of money. So he, he asked people and somebody told them my real name. And then he went to the cops with that information. Like, I don't even know if he went to the cops or not. Somebody went to the cops. He might have paid somebody to go to the cops for him. And I got caught maybe like six months down the line in a hotel room. SWAT team came to get me. And when you get caught, you go to Bookings. Then you go to Rikers Island. So I you're back at Rikers. Yeah, but I didn't have bail at this time because I still got a felony from Florida. 
So I go to grand jury. When you get arrested, you go to grand jury within seven days. When I go in front of grand jury, they offer me two to four years and I take it. That wasn't a bad deal for giving you a record. But I had a girlfriend at the time. She paid for my lawyer. I had the best lawyer in Brooklyn. His name was like John Stella. But when I go to grand jury, they offer me two to four years. He's like, you, you're not going to take this, right? Like, I mean, he, he didn't even think in his right mind that anybody would take prison time within seven days of being locked up. Usually you stay there for months fighting the case. He's like, they can't have evidence on you. But the thing was, I seen myself on video. That's another thing. When I, when I robbed this drug dealer, I was on video in this hallway with a gun. And I had my Brooklyn tattoo showing. And I it used to be on New York One News. So I used to watch that video all the time on YouTube. So I knew I was going to go to prison sooner or later. So when I took that crime, he's like, don't take it. I mean, two to four years, a lot of time. If they offer you that, you shouldn't take it. But I took it. And then when I went to go get sentenced, they do like a PSI report. And you got to tell your crime and stuff like that. And they wanted to like, you got code D's, who are they? I'm like, listen, I didn't even do the crime. I'm just taking the time because it looked like me. So when I get sentenced, I get sentenced to three to six years instead of two to four. What what's your feeling when you when that happens? I didn't even know that was legal, like at this but it wasn't legal, right? Like I ended up three years down the line, I ended up coming back down to court and taking it taking it out, getting my two to four back. Getting the two to four back. Yeah. Out of that two to four, how much time do you serve? Oh, I did the whole four. You did the whole because you kept getting into trouble. I, well, the thing was they released me. Well, well, what happened was, remember I told you I went to the box when I, the first bid, and then I went to the next jail. The next jail was a maximum security prison. And in the next jail, the same Lion King kid that I cut, he was also there, already there. So when I got there, somebody told me that he was going to try to cut me because I cut him. But he wasn't going to do it. He's going to send somebody else to do it. So as soon as I go to the yard, I cut the same kid again with a can top and I didn't get caught this time. I didn't get caught. So after I did that, I got approached by the Bloods and I ended up joining the Bloods at this time. What did the Bloods say to you to recruit you in in prison? Well, they're the ones that told me like, the kid that you cut is here. I didn't know he was there, like I had no idea. So I knew, one of them I knew from my adolescent time in Rikers Island. So he came up to me and goes, listen, he's gonna try to cut you in here. So you gotta like get him first. So I instantly went to the yard and I seen him first and I ended up cutting him instantly. So then they came up to me and they're like, they just break. Like I already knew what the bloods was. Like all my friends was blood at this time. What does it mean to be a blood? What is that? I mean, you're just part of a gang. You just, it's nothing special. Do they give you like rules or anything like that? Yeah, you you know, you get your oath. You, they give you rules to follow. What's the oath and what are the rules? I mean, just stuff that you live by. The rules are like basically you can't do drugs, you can't, you can't snitch, you can't like mess with like homosexual people and stuff like that. And this is applied in prison. You can't do any of that. Yeah, what? I mean, people don't do that anyway. But what happens if you violate one of those rules? You get cut. They'll just cut you. Did you see that happen a lot in prison? Yeah, I mean, you go to prison. There's like ninety percent of people walking around with scars in their face in New York State. Like, a lot of people don't stab people in, in New York State. Like, in the feds, you hear stories about people getting stabbed and dying. That's really rare in New York State. Everybody just plays razor tag instead. Razor tag? Yeah. What's razor tag? Well, they cut you, and then you got to try to cut them back. <laughs> this is what you guys are doing on an everyday basis. <laughs> yeah. Who are the Bloods beefing with in prison? Like, who do you have to watch out for? Other Bloods. <laughs> Other, so the Bloods are against each other? It's there's different sets and different nations of the Bloods. The Bloods started because they was getting oppressed by Spanish people in New York State. They was getting oppressed by the Nets as in the Land Kings. But by the time I turned blood, there was really no the Spanish gangs don't hold no weight in New York State. Like they 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 act like they do, but they don't. Nobody cares about them. So the Bloods got so big that they got nobody else to beef with. So they beef with they snub. What's the most violent thing you encountered in prison that happened to you directly? I mean, I got people try to like stab me and cut me before, but it never really went their way. And what do you do in those situations? Are you like, are you 
provoking it or you're just walking down the hall and you get attacked? Yeah, but like, you know when stuff is happening, you know who's in the jail and so I always protected myself. And I was not, and I was always luckier because like I was under the person who basically ran, the, he still runs the whole Bloods in New York State to this day. He's never coming home. And I was always under him. So like when I first turned blood, like the couple of jails I went to, people always like, oh, we don't know who you are. So they send me like to go cut people. And then once you do that enough, everybody knows who you are. So when you get to a jail, it's like, you're good. Like nobody messes with you and stuff like that. No, can anyone be a blood? Like, can I go and, and join the bloods? Or do nah. You, how does that work? I mean, you really get approached by it, right? Like, it's not. If you're asking to join a gang, like, they're not going to let you join a gang. Hmm. You got to, like, be approached by them or know somebody. Now, do they check paperwork in prison at all? Like, to make sure you're not a rat or a yeah, sex of offender? Course. The bloods do. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people do. Like, Like, I got to a jail one time and... My bunkie was a white dude, and I went to the yard, and the, there was like white people, and they sent me a message like, "Hey, bring your paperwork to the yard, and you can come hang out with us. We about to have war soon. We want you on our side." And like they didn't even know I was blood at this time. Like it was some white dudes, and you don't really see them a lot. Like upstate New York is racist, but where I'm from, the city, there's really no racist people. Like, but upstate New York, there's a whole bunch of racist people, so they. They want to see your paperwork and then they just, you join like the Aryan Nation, whatever they are up here. So, but when that happened to me, I ended up cutting the head of the Aryan Nation. For what? Because he, he told me like, we're going to go to war with the Spanish people. We're going to go to war with the Spanish and the black people. And whose side are you on? If you're, if you're not with us, you're against us. And I'm like, like, in my head, I'm like, who the fuck is you? Like, I don't even know who you are. Like, he didn't know I was a blood. He didn't do no research on me or nothing. And that's just because you're white. Yeah, because my bunkie was white and I ended up beating on my bunkie. Like when you get to a jail, you're locked in there for seven days. You can't come out. It's like quarantine or they like go to medical and stuff. But I was in there with some white dude and he kept chewing tobacco and spitting in the thing. And that shit makes me nauseous. Like, and that shit's so disgusting to me. Like, so I asked him, like, yo, bro, don't do that in here. Like, and, and he ended up doing it a couple of times. So I ended up beating him up. So by the time I came out, the white dudes was already like looking for me for me to try to join it because they they outnumbered. Yeah. So when that happened, like I ended up cutting the head of the Aryan Nation and in the jail I was in. And after that, like I have beef with the white people. You're beefing with everyone. Yeah, I mean, but the beef is like nobody touches. Like I never, I don't got no scars on my face. Like nobody ever really did nothing to me. Like I got, I, I got jumped before, but. What are you guys using to make knives? Well, everybody got real blades, like from the street. Cause you get real, you get visits. So when you go down to the visit, people get drugs, they get razor blades. And it's easy for visitors to smuggle them in for you guys? Yeah. There's no I mean, like metal detectors or anything? Yeah, but like if you get a, a number 11 blade, it doesn't ring. Really? Yeah. What's a number 11 blade? What does that well, mean? It's scapels. If you look online, like. If you Google like a number 11 scalpel, it's like it for some reason that doesn't really ring. And that's what you guys are using to stab yeah, people up. But, but they had like we had like hundreds of them. Wow. Now, is there a lot of contraband in these prisons, like drugs, anything like that? Yeah, there's always drugs. There's no cell phones. I never seen a cell phone my whole time upstate. Hmm. But well, these are stuff you, you could bring from the streets. Right. And I mean, one jail I was in, I seen real liquor bottles and that's really rare. What kind of drugs are coming in? Everything from Suboxone. And you weren't doing it though? Nah, I never did drugs. I never was into drugs. Like, and especially being a blood, like, that's one of the rules anyway. So, like. But you can't do drugs as a blood. Yeah, well, weed doesn't really count, but like, no coke or dope. Or, Why did they have that rule? Because the Spanish people used to do drugs and like, they lost the. They lost they wars because they're high 90 percent of the time on suboxins and and heroin like you can't be in a gang and you can't be on point if you're like doing these kind of drugs that slow you down that's interesting that uh you know gang members have this rule about no drugs 
I mean, don't get me wrong. There's people, a lot of people do drugs, even gang members. They just don't get caught. Now, what, when was the next time you went to the shoe or the box? And what was it for? Well, I went to the shoe like over 20 times. And it's just for fighting, basically? For fighting, contraband. Well, one time I, 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 I broke a police jaw. Why do you, you attack a police officer? Nah, he hung up my phone call. I hit him with the phone. I didn't even punch him. But they they basically kicked like seven teeth out. So what happened? Like you're on the phone and he hangs it up? And yeah, he hangs it up. He didn't even tell me nothing. He hung it up. So I automatically just hit him with the phone. And what do they do right then and there? Well, they kind of grabbed me and then I passed out because they like had my arm behind my back. And I passed out, but I woke up in the cell with, like, all my teeth missing, basically. They beat you up that bad? Yeah. So how did you get new teeth? Did they, like, provide that for you? Yeah, they gave me implants. Like, right now, I have, like, cancer because of that. It's almost finished, though. But they gave me implants, and I didn't catch a new charge for breaking his jaw because what they did to me. So I signed a piece of paper that's, they're not going to press charges, and I'm not going to press charges. But they gave me implants, and then in 2020, I found out, like, one of the implants fell out, and I went to the doctor, and the way they did the implants, they did it on purpose, that they left an infection there. So now I have, like, a lawsuit against them, but it's called, it's like self-inflicted cancer when you have, like, mouth cancer. So they had an infection there, and then years later, that it turns into like cancer and you got the implants done while you're in prison yeah i mean they have to do it do they bring you to an outside facility no they did it inside the facility they did it inside the same people that broke my teeth fixed my teeth so that's why it was like that's wild yeah now is your dad and stepmom coming to visit you my dad was and how did like what did he think how was your relationship with him well my dad told me like he feels safer when i'm in prison than when i'm in the street so he felt like you needed to be there? It's not even that. When I'm in the streets, like, he was just thinking I'm going to get killed one day for the shit I was doing. Like, he knew I was always playing with guns and stuff like that. In prison, like, I always knew how to fight. So it was like, he's like, there's nothing much that could really happen to you in prison. And your dad's just like a hard working class individual that yeah. he, never involved in crime, nothing like that? No. So he, was he, like, disappointed in you? How was he feeling? I guess he was in the beginning, but it's like, he got so used to me. Like I said, I went to prison or jail when I was like 11 and 12. So it was like, he just got used to it, I guess, by the time. And you did the whole four years because you kept getting into trouble. I got, well, when I got, you got to do programs to get released early on good time. I never did a program. I never even had a, I can't have a job in prison. Like I never... They don't even offer me jobs. Why didn't they offer you a job? Because I'm like a gang member. And like I'm a known gang member in prison. So So what did you do for money? Did you have like a hustle? No. Nah, I mean, I always had money. I had like girlfriends and my dad used to send me money. So you can't spend a lot in prison. You could only spend $55 a, every two weeks unless what, you're buying cigarettes. What would you get when you got that money? I mean, I, I, I always had food. I had everything in prison as well. Like I came out of prison with like, $8,000. $8,000? From what? What did you make From, money off of? I wasn't making money in there. I was just, everybody was sending me money. And then when you go to the box, you, SHU, you can't, you can't spend, spend money. 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 So it's like I'm saving everything. Yeah, you 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 can only buy like certain things like a bar of soap oh, or something. I used to get pills. I used to get Kalana pins. What is that? It's like a Xanax. So nobody in the prison system gets that. When I went to Rikers Island one time, Somebody told me this trick. So when I went to Rikers Island, I told them I get seizures. And then I told them I'm allergic to every single seizure medication, like Dilatin and Capra. So th that's the only other choice they have is to give you this number A1 narcotic. But I never took it. And I used to get it three times a day. Like, that's not even unheard of in the street. Like, there's not even people that get this in the street. But I used to get it in prison all the time. And I never took it, so I used to save it and sell it. And I used to get like forty dollars a day just for those pills. Really? Did they didn't make sure that you took it during pill line? Because in the feds, they would sit there with the flashlight and make sure you actually. Yeah, swallowed. I mean, there were certain jails I used to go to that. Well, I, it's easy to cheat. Like if you know what you're doing, like I just put it in my lip or like. And you probably got meds or painkillers for the teeth uh, replacement too, right? 
they didn't give me shit. Like when I was there, that was like the worst time I ever had in jail. Like uh-huh. I couldn't eat, I couldn't do nothing. Like it was, it was bad. I didn't even get medical attention for like forty days. Like I was in there fucking hurting, and I didn't. I thought I was gonna die in those cells. Medical attention in prison sucks. It's the worst. Yeah, but the medical. Like, it's racist up there. They don't like black people. Like, if you pass Rikers Island, they don't like black people because it's racist. They hated me more than they hate black people because I'm a blood. So, like, they looked at me like I'm a traitor to white people. So, they all hated me, period. So, like, the nurses, the COs, everybody. So, is there normally not white people in the bloods? No. Why is that? Because, like it's a black gang it started to protect like to, for, against the land king so it's not and it's interesting that they let a white guy into it then i mean there was other there is other white people in it but it's it's rare but i'm not from upstate i'm from brooklyn so it's like all my friends are black and spanish period so it's like yeah. now are you able to leave the bloods at any time or are you committed to it like how does that work can you say i'm done with this one day yeah i mean you could it depends who you know and like it depends like if you hold position or like it, it comes down to certain things but i told you i was under the person that runs the whole new york state for this set so i could do whatever i wanted basically like nobody could really tell me shit and you don't run with them or have any gang affiliation no nah, i still talk to them like i still talk to all my the same people i always talk to from prison but like I, I've been, I'm too old. Like that, once you get thirty and you're trying to gangbang, it's like <laughs> it's not a good combination. Yeah, it's like for young people. Like it's not. How old were you when you got out of prison? Uh, twenty eight. Was that the last time you went to yeah, prison? Two thousand and seventeen. So why did you decide not to do any more crime or, or go back to prison again after that? What, what changed? What, what changed in your mindset? To be honest, like, when I got released from prison, I had two to four. So I got released in three years. I had a year left. When I got out of prison, I didn't even report to parole. I went straight on the run. Again. <laughs> I came out of Sing Sing Correctional Facility. I never reported to parole. So I knew I was going to go back to prison. So it was, because when you're on gang parole, that shit is just terrible. Like, Yeah, what is it like to be on gang parole? Well, I never was because I never reported. So, like, they take pictures of you, and you can't wear certain colors. It's, like, just rules and stipulations are crazy. If the police stop you in the street, they automatically going to know that you're blood, and they got your picture. It's, like, it just leads to more harassment. So I never reported. So since I never reported, they never had to follow me. And did you end up getting caught? I ended up turning myself in. And you got more prison time. Yeah, I, I got... No, you don't get more. You just finish your sentence, right? You got. I had a year left. They put me in a detention center where I could have got released in 30 days or 90 days. And then I ended up cutting somebody in there and <laughs> did my whole year in so the box. So your whole life has just been like cutting and, and prison and you missed like your whole 20s uh, for this. Yeah, basically. Do you have like regrets about it? Do you think about it? I don't really have regrets because it's like it made me the person I am today. Like I was always smart. I, I'm not. I, I was always the smartest person in the room. Like so. Like even when I was in prison, like like I told you all the cutting and stuff. Like that, I might have cut like five people max when I was in prison. Like so, it's not like that was going on a lot. It's just a lot of politics, and I'm always smarter than people. That's why I don't have a scar on my face. That's why I've never been stabbed. I, I just see stuff before it happens. And you just went with it because that was the position you were in. Yeah, well, when you get to prison too, like, there's there's five phones. Three of them are blood phones. One is, like, a Muslim phone, and the other phone is, like, there's no, like, regular people don't even, like, live really good in jail. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's exceptions to every rule, but most of the time it's all gang-related phones and stuff like that. Yeah. So I always, I always wanted to be a blood because I'm like, I don't want to be on the lower end. I might as well join them so I could reap the benefits of jail. Like that, they was running every single jail, every you, single spot. And you felt like you had to. I didn't have to. Like I said, I never approached nobody to be blood. They approached me. But like but, once they approached you, you felt like you, it was. Yeah, the I wanted. I, I've been wanting to be a blood. Like 
a year before they approached me, like, because I already seen how it was going down. Yeah. So what was life like for you after you get out of jail that last time? What do you get into? Are you working or how are you staying out of trouble? Well, to be honest, I went back to like doing the same kind of dumb shit. I had money though. Like I always had money and I always came across money. But luckily I didn't have to rob anybody or do any of that stuff. So I I don't know. Stuff just happened to me where I got a whole bunch of money. You weren't afraid of going back to jail again? Nah. I mean, to be honest, like I never was. I didn't care about going back to jail. Like it wasn't like. I never felt like it's too much of a bad thing. And this was in your late 20s. Yeah. So w- what made you change that whole mindset? Because you're not still doing that now. So what nah. changed? Well, to be honest, like once I found out I had the cancer in 2020 and then I got my dog. Yeah, we have, we have a dog in the studio right now. <laughs> she changed everything. Like I, I felt like I had a kid and I never want to go back to prison. I never did a crime. So your dog changed your life. Yeah, that's basically. <laughs> What's your dog's name? What type of dog? Um, she's an Akita. Um, her name is Kita Bear. Kita Bear. And she's just the best dog in the world. And so the dog inspired you to change your life and not go back to jail. Did you feel like that gave you like a reason to live for your first time ever? Like, to be honest, I, all right, let me back a little bit. The reason I didn't want to go back to jail was because my father died in 2018. Okay. So that was like a trigger. Yeah. Like when I was in prison, I was always good because my father used to send me money. He used to come visit me. So like once he died, I told myself I can't go back to prison. Like that. that's, it wouldn't even be right. How did that make you feel when he died? I mean, I was sad, but like he, he's been hurt. Look how smart she is. Like we talk about her and she's already on the move. <laughs> but it's, it's just when he died, like I knew he was going to die. He'd he been, ha- he been fighting um, hard problems his whole life. All right. <laughs> oh, I got a friend on the show today. It's so <laughs> nice. She's so soft. Yeah, so she's a big baby. Between your father's death and, and getting on kita bear that helped you yeah i mean to be like i had a girlfriend right right before i had the dog i had a girlfriend and i always wanted kids and she used to ask me like if we have kids would you stop smoking weed and cigarettes i used to smoke cigarettes and weed and i used to be like i smoke i stop cigarettes but i I won't stop weed even for a kid and when i got my dog i instantly within like two weeks I, i never smoked a cigarette ever again so you grew up yeah it's like she made me want to change like everything like what do you think that was i don't know and it's also i found out what an empath is i never knew like what what an empath person is did you feel like you felt like love for the first time maybe or what do you think it wasn't it? love it's just i don't know it's just like i felt like i had a responsibility right like and i she was like my first really responsibility that and you just gave up crime everything at that point every single thing i never did a crime after that wow that that's crazy i mean that's a, that's life-changing do you think about that now like uh, why that was and then what what happened i mean i do is i mean i really wasn't doing crime before i had it right like i was just living day to day i wasn't working so i i was trying to figure out what i wanted to do in my life i wanted to stream so like before i got it, i was trying to stream and stuff but that shit is hard to get into and but then once i got hers, it's just it brought you new blessings, new opportunity, and new mindset. Yeah, it's just I had a responsibility. Like when I wake up, I gotta cook for her. Like I don't even feed her dog food. I cook for her every single day. That's so awesome. You found like a companion. Yeah. I mean, like I had girlfriends. I always had a girlfriend, right? So it was like, and I, like I figured out what the empath was. Like I fell in love with every single girl I ever had. Like I used to love every girl that I had, but is. I was always an empath. I always could help people. I always wanted to help people. Yeah. But I never knew what that was. And then one day I read like a post on Instagram. It's like Tyrese put something and he put, he's an empath. And then when I Googled it like that, my whole life made sense after that. So what did you end up getting into for work after this happened when your life changed? Well, in 2020 during COVID, I turned, I got unemployment. I got stimulus check. And I started investing it. I invested into crypto and stocks. That's when AMC and GameStop was going crazy. Yeah, I remember those days. I turned twelve hundred into forty-seven thousand with GameStop. Wow. And then I was getting unemployment. So 
I was just getting so much money and I invested everything in crypto. And got lucky in crypto? Yeah, well, I got lucky with a couple of coins. Like, I invested in 100 coins and only three. Like, it made me a millionaire at one point with crypto. Right, but then it, it came down. Yeah, everything it. came down. Like, I sold, like, 100K and then now I got, like, under 100K. Yeah, and what do you do for work now? Well, I still invest in crypto. I still hold everything. I don't really sell anything. A whole bunch of my crypto is locked. But I stream and I, um, I'm a gambling streamer. And that brings in revenue? Is that like a full-time job? It doesn't really bring too much revenue right now, but maybe eventually it will. Mm-hmm. But um, I just try to make content and stream and do but stuff like that. But that at least supports you to live for the yeah. most part? I mean, I have money to live regardless, mm-hmm. but it just gives me something to do where I don't got to do any crime or do it. Like, I don't really talk to a lot of people in the street. I don't have a smartphone. You don't have a smartphone? No. You, what do you have, a flip phone? I have a flip phone. Really? But it's on purpose, right? Because I don't like social media no more. But I, you use social media for your business. Yeah, I use Twitter now, but look, I, I use a <laughs> flip wow, phone. Wow, I remember those days. But it just, I used to be on Instagram taking pictures and videos every single day of what I used to do and stuff like that. And he realized it's not, it's, that's not yeah. more to life. I don't even want people to know, like, like all my friends and stuff. Like, I don't even care what they're doing no more. Like, they're not even, I, they're all criminals. Like, 90% of my friends in the street are all criminals or in a gang and stuff like that. Like, And you outgrew that. Yeah, it's just, like, I don't really care what they're doing anymore. And I don't even want to show off what I'm doing because it, it doesn't even make sense. Interesting. I mean, you grew so much in, in a short period of time. Yeah. And you attribute that all to your father passing and and getting your dog yeah i mean everything now is like because of my dog but i kind of stopped doing crime or not do too much crime after my father passed do you wish you came to that mindset while he was still alive so he could see it yeah but i feel like he needed a pass for me to do that yeah like i told you he used to tell me he feels safer if i'm in jail than in the street so it's like i never like, it wasn't too much of a big deal for me to go to prison. Like, no. I always had money. I always lived good. Like, of course, I don't have my freedom and I don't like it, but it wasn't the worst thing. So what's your message? Like, why come out here? Why drive all the way out here to share your story, which is, I'm sure, something you've never really done before? What do you want people to take away after listening to hearing everything you've gone through, what you've got involved with? Well, I just want... Well, I don't want people to go down the same path that I went down to and go through everything that I went through for them to get to this point. I I just, I don't know. I just wish people could change their life because I see so much young people and everybody going to prison and getting with gangs and stuff like that. And all that shit is bullshit. And you're just going to end up doing the rest of your life in prison. Yeah. Like, what do you say to the kid that is it try, that thinks it's cool to be a gangbanger? It's not. Like 90% of the... 99% of people are, like, using you if you're in a gang, right? It's like they all either want money. They want something from you. They either want money. They want you to waste your life. Like, it's like people don't do nothing, right? It's like if you're ahead of the gang, you don't really got to do nothing anymore. You could just tell a whole bunch of other people to do stuff for you. No. Yeah. So you're just, like, wasting your life for no reason. Because everybody in the gang already knows, like, Like, gangs switch so much when it comes to the bloods and stuff like that. There's, like, 100 sets, and, like, next year is going to be 100 new sets, and then 50 of the old sets are going to get gone. So it's, like, they just it's just a waste of your time and a waste of your life. Yeah. Definitely. And, and I never really talked about prison too much because, like, I don't like glorifying it. And, and I feel like if you're not doing nothing with your life now, like, nobody's going to listen to you. Like, nobody really cares about your past stories, right? Because that's just stories. But yeah. they, they can inspire people. Our stories are powerful, you know? Like, you don't know how many lives you can impact just by hearing yours, you know? But I feel like you got to be doing something now. Like, you just can't live off your past, right? Like, you can't live off your past stories. It's like, I feel like that you're not really going to, you're not going to touch the youth. You might inspire older people or, like, people that have been through similar stuff or, like, the youth doesn't listen to nobody that's... Like, they want to see the results. Yeah, like right now, if you don't have a gold chain on, it's like they're not even going to listen to you, right? Like if you don't have... A, if you can't show them $10,000, they're 
the youth has more money than the old people, so like mm-hmm. they only care about money and stuff like that. So like they wouldn't even be watching the show if I didn't have a following. Like if I had ten people following me and and listen to your story, the youth aren't gonna pay attention to that. Yeah. They want what's in, what's hot, you know, the the glamorous stuff. Mm-hmm. It's hard to touch the youth. Like a lot of people like on YouTube and like and I feel like a lot of people on YouTube they talk about their own story so much that is like there's only a certain amount of things you could say, right? Like sooner or later you're gonna start making stuff up or you're gonna start telling other people's stories and you're just gonna run out of content. Like I don't watch like to be honest, I've seen every last interview that you did now but before that i had no idea who you were i don't have no idea who none of these people on your show was you just saw it on youtube i seen it on um somebody sent me something it was about um the guy that he was talking about he got raped in prison yeah so when i seen that i'm like like is that real like and when i looked it up and i seen your show and then i seen the jd jd delay yeah and there's like something about the jd interview like wanted me to do an interview as well after that like because i don't know i don't i don't remember the details no more because i watched so much of you i watched every last interview that you did at this point so like i don't remember well i'm glad you you like watching it man and i'm glad I, it it's touched cool. you no yeah. it's definitely cool it's just I, I don't really watch too much prison stuff because i live through it like i don't really care like what yeah other it's hard sometimes to talk about it too it's not even hard it's just like most of the stories that people say is like stuff that I've really seen before. It's not nothing new and entertaining too much. Yeah. But like the way you do interviews is different because you're like interviewing people. You don't talk about, like you already told your story, right? Like you don't really sit here and tell your story because you already told it. And there's only a certain amount of things you can say about your story. Yeah. So what you do is a little bit different than what everybody else does. Well, and my purpose is so much bigger now than my story. It's not about No, that's me. what I'm saying. Yeah. That, that's what I like about your show per se. Like, I never really watch other people. Other, yeah, other prison content creators, I know it's very based on their stories. Yeah, and they do that for years, though. Like, I know people like Bloods that have been doing it for years, and they just start making stuff up, like, within, like, a year because <laughs> they're running. You burned out, yeah. Yeah, like, <laughs> you've got no more stories left. Like. No, you have to be able to pivot in anything. It's not even just prison content, you know? It's anything. But I'm grateful that I've been able to find something that I'm good at and that it's special and it's unique and we're going with it. And everyone has a different story. Like everyone, all these individuals go to prison, but each person has a different experience. No, of course. So it's interesting. But Stan, thanks for coming out today. It's been a great conversation. Um, We wish you the best and, you know, looking forward to staying in contact and, and keep enjoying watching the show, man. Thank you. I appreciate you having me. Of course.